Hey what's up guys, welcome to Gabriel Gaprod. Today we are going to see something that quite a few people have requested over the time and I always wanted to recreate this effect because it's a good challenge and it's actually pretty cool. But a lot of parts went into making this happen and I will try my best to show you all the steps that I took to achieve something like this. And as always, this project is available on my Patreon page with this exact scene, the shaders, the scripts, you can get everything and even more. And many more assets for your game. So make sure to check that out. Alright, now with that being said, let's see how we can do this. So one of the tricky parts is actually the motion of the nuke, the animation basically. It needs to have a specific timing. But before that, I knew I needed a 3D mesh, so I jumped to Blender and started with this cylinder and then immediately created the UV maps like this. I removed the top and the bottom faces and then I adjusted the UV map to fit the UV boundaries. I turned on Live and Wrap so I could shape the mesh into a cloud mushroom and have the UV maps updated at the same time. So I basically focused on creating the bottom part of the mushroom first, which is basically a funeral, very roughly, and then I added a few more rings in between. For the top part, I duplicated this ring and attached it into a different object. Inside that new object I started extruding the geometry so I could model the cloud that is basically shaped like a sphere, more or less. Very roughly at the beginning and then I added a few more rings in between to make it smoother. I then joined the vertices at the top but I did not merge them so it's easy to create the UV maps. Now I only needed to create the UV maps, which actually requires me to use the light map pack. Then select the face and choose follow active quad. And this is very important because I want the mesh to be a square that fits this wall area. My last step for this mesh was to use a subdivision surface modifier because the shader will need more geometry. Of course, if this was to use inside the game, you would need to be careful with the triangle scale. But we are doing this just for academic purpose and just for fun. Now, with these meshes done, I moved on to Unity. And first, I really wanted to get the motion of the nuclear explosion right. So, I created a particle system, attached it to an empty game object, which was going to be used for the bottom part of the nuke. Then I just made sure this didn't loop and decided that it will be a 10 second nuke explosion. But it could be longer, of course. And then I proceeded to assign the bottom part, the mesh, and increased the size to 100 so it fits well in my scene. And I also assigned the material as a placeholder. And also needed to rotate this minus 90 degrees in the X. And since it was always facing the camera, I had to change the render alignment to local. Great, so now I was ready to animate this with the size over lifetime. And here I could animate each axis separately. But basically, I wanted the X and the Y to have this kind of curve, where it grows in the beginning and then slowly expands, basically. And for the Z, I wanted the same thing but much quicker in the beginning. Basically it gets taller really fast. Something like this was looking good for now. I duplicated the nuke bottom and assigned the nuke top basically in the renderer. And since I already had animated the size of lifetime and that the pivot of my mesh was in the correct position. I basically add my animation of the nuke done, for now. I just made sure that the top was a little bit larger and that's it, I was ready to move on to the next part. 
which was to create an unlit graph for our Nuke shader. So, this shader was going to be transparent and with alpha clip threshold at zero, so I won't have any problems further down the process. I was going to need a color parameter set to white and full opacity and in HDR mode. And to have that kind of stylized feeling that the new was going to have, I was going to use a simple noise with a parameter to control the scale. And this simple noise by itself doesn't have that stylized feeling, but with the posterized note, we are able to control how many colors basically it will pass. One, two, three, four. I think that five, six is a good amount. Ok, so I needed to add motion to the simple noise. Basically, I added a time node, which was going to be multiplied by a vector 2 to control the speed of the noise. And this motion was going to be added to a UV node, just like this, which was going to be connected to the simple noise. And that's it, I already had movement in my noise. But as you can see, there is much happening here. So, what I did was duplicate this note, I needed another simple noise, basically, and I created another vector 2 to control the motion of this second simple noise. And this would allow me to multiply one noise with the other and to create a better looking effect. And then finally, I only needed to multiply the posterize node with the color and assign to the color input, and that's it. I had most of my shader done. And as soon as I created the material and assigned it to the nukes mesh, I basically add what I wanted. All I have to do now is increase the intensity of the color, and that's it. We have a nuke. Look at this beauty. I'm just kidding, this needs a little bit more work than that. Basically, I needed to increase the noise scale. This is a nuke, this needs to feel bigger. Then, the motions of the noise were going too fast for something that is so big. So I adjusted them to have this slow feeling. Always going from the bottom to the top, the motion. That's how smoke, that's how fire goes. And with this now I was able to add a nice touch, some vertex offset. Which was going to be manipulated by the noise. And the way I could do that is use a normal vector that is going to be multiplied by the posterized node. And this would be multiplied by a vertex offset, basically a vector one, a float, that would control the vertex offset amount. And if I added this to the position of the object, and then connected this to the position input of the unlit master, I would create a nice vertex offset according to the brightest part of the noise. But as soon as I increase the vertex offset, I got these squares all around my mesh. So I realized at this point that I forgot to smooth the mesh in Blender. It makes a lot of difference. And once I did that, it was looking pretty cool already. Of course, the more geometry, the better looking it will be. But that's looking quite nice. What I then wanted to do and needed to do is nukes have brighter spots, basically. So I wanted this to be brighter at the top. And I split the UV node and used the G channel, passed it through a power node that will allow me to control the brightness amount of the top, basically. And if I added this to the posterized node, I would get that feeling that it's brighter at the top, which is great. But, as you can see, the bottom part is also too bright. And I actually realized that the top of the nook was a little bit too high, so I pushed it a little bit down, just like this. And in a moment I realized that this would create a little problem. But for now, what I needed was to fade out this mesh. 
and I use the UV node, set the channel to UV1, and if we split this node, we will be able to control this with Vertex Stream. So I connected the R channel to the Alpha, and now in my particle system, I was able to use Custom Vertex Stream, remove the color option, and add the UV2, and the custom one XYZ double V option. And up here, all I needed was to turn on custom data that will allow me to use vector. And basically, the X now controls the alpha. If I set it to one, it's visible. Now, with the curve, I was able to animate this to make sure that towards the end it fades out, just like this, it goes from one to zero, basically. And the little problem that I was talking earlier is that now we have the bottom part intersecting the top part, quite a lot, actually. But I found a simple solution for this. I basically went to Blender and erased these two rings and also increased a little bit the size of this ring, just like this, and push it just a little bit down. And then at the end now, what matters is that the top part and the bottom part blend really well with each other. You don't see, you don't see the bottom part intersecting with the top part. And I was really pleased with this result. So at this point, all I had to do was to improve the visual aesthetics of the nuke. Basically add particles, add beam explosions, add flash of lights, add smoke, and a few more things that would make this look better. So I started off by creating a beam of light that would leave the same time as the nuke, which is 10 seconds, and this will be really big, like 250. And I will choose a light orange, like this, with a low opacity, and in color of lifetime I would fade this out, and also use the size of a lifetime to make this grow and grow and grow, basically. And I used the material that I had here, which is basically this point of light that I've showed how to create so many times in my tutorials. And I'm using this with a HDR color, basically, and this is the result that I get. It's a little bit too saturated, so I made it whiter. And it was looking good. It was to add some light to this beam, a real light, so I created a point of light, saved it as a prefab, and assigned it here, with these parameters. From this particle system now, I was able to create a flash, a really bright flash at the beginning. And I duplicated the beam, and this was going to have a shorter lifetime, like 0 0.6, should be fine. It's a little bit smaller, and in size of lifetime, it goes from big to small. Creating this bright light at the beginning. Once I had that done, I created some particles with a lifetime between 2 and 4, and they would really move fast in the beginning, some of them. And I also used gravity for some of the particles too. In the emission I used the burst of 30, more or less, and I used the hemisphere in the shape. And then I also used the velocity of a lifetime, so it goes up much faster in the z-axis as well. And all I had to do now was to use a color of a lifetime gradient that goes from orange to transparent. And the last thing that I had to do for these particles is use the stretched billboard so they would look like sparks, basically. And that's it. And it was looking already cool, not that bad, much better than only the nuke. So I went on and added now a shockwave, which is basically this circle like this. And it will basically have a lifetime of 2 seconds, that should be enough. And it would be on the ground, this one, by the way. And it will basically grow from small to big, as you can see. It adds a really nice touch, because nukes have a lot of shockwaves. So they even have shockwaves in the air, so I added a few more shockwaves.
and I think that this gives a really nice touch. It was looking pretty cool. I also wanted a shockwave that would hit the camera, so I created this mesh, which is basically a ring, and I used the material that I used before, the circle, and this is how it ended up looking. It was looking really great. I think the bottom of the nuke wasn't looking that good, so I also created something that it is not truly advise it to use in games, which is several spheres that are using the nuke shader, basically with vertex distortion. And it looks really awesome and really cool, but if this was for a game, I would make it differently, obviously. And at this point I had a pretty good looking nuke, at least most of it was done. I also wanted to add smoke to this. So, I used this shader that I created for the tornado, which is the same shader that I have in clouds as well, and it creates an awesome effect. What I did differently from the tornado tutorial is that I adapted the shader to work with the particle system, so I used these UV nodes that control several parameters, like the dissolve amount, basically, the twirl amount, the twirl center as well, they are all controlled with the particle system. And this allowed me to basically duplicate the nuke top and the nuke bottom particle systems and make them a little bit bigger, assign the tornado shader, the smoke shader basically, and since they are just a little bit bigger, they are fitting quite nicely around the nuke and it gives this really nice sensation. So make sure to check the Tornado tutorial if you want to recreate this shader. It's an awesome shader and can be used for several things, as you can see. What I then also used was the ring that I created before for the shockwave and applied the smoke shader. And it really adds this nice touch at the bottom. And sometimes, if you look at nukes, they basically create the hole in the clouds that are in the sky. And all I had to do was to duplicate the ground smoke and push it to the top. And I think it's a nice detail that I couldn't miss. And it adds a lot to this nuke explosion. And that's basically it. At this point I was very pleased with the nuke explosion. So I went an extra mile and added a projectile, a missile that uses the tornado shader, once again, with a beam in the front, and also a few particles, nothing really special. I also created a very basic animation, and triggered the animation with a script that delays the nuke explosion according to the missile animation. It was looking really interesting, so I also wanted to create the sound effects, and I went to free sound site, where I found several clips and layered them together to create this nice sound effect. And this is the end result. And that's it, I think it's amazing, I had a blast creating this scene, and I hope that this video helped you and that you learned something new as well. And this project is available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested in supporting me. And I just want to say a special thanks to my super mega patrons, which are Andre Leontine, CJ, don't read my name, sorry I just did, Goblin Plague, Great Fast Data, James Finlay, Joseph Feldman, Juan Mediola, Kim Kupolain, Mark Brittingham, Nicholas Jave, Ricky Klein, Spencer Harrison, Tirita, Warden Studios, Wingham Yes, Javier, and the Ionian. I'm really sorry if I pronounced any of your names wrong. You guys are amazing, and I couldn't be more thankful of your support. 
I hope you have all enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope to see you in the next one.